by oh, myself again. Um, you, you'd created a, 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 I think, a really uh, significant picture of of uh, the authenticity and the story narrative of Justin Bieber, which I think is is representative of a larger cultural shift. Yeah, I think that, you're right. Um, is is really meaningful. I mean, think about it compared to the other news of this week, uh, with the very you know un, untimely and and sad death of Davy Jones, who oh, by I contrast know. the monkeys were a made for TV band, right? Like mm -hmm. the American music producers wanted to have a, a response to the Beatles and they took casting calls and they hired people who didn't even play musical instruments to, right. to fit these roles, right? Like a very crafted kind of, um, of, of product. And that's in some ways maybe represented a whole generational approach to uh, culture and world and, and music and so on that you could sort of fabricate mm -hmm. all of these pieces. And there's this, in this very high-tech and overly plastic world that we have, it seems that there's a generational emphasis on authenticity of story really, mm -hmm. really mattering. So, so Justin Bieber represents that. But then there's also the, the, the fact that he's religious is a strength because of the way that he does it. If, if I'm reading your book right, yeah. you try to suggest he is, is really posturing a kind of personal authenticity of religion that's invitational but is not pushy. That is not um, obligatory. Precisely. But yeah. Talk, talk, talk and, a little and, bit about that. And, and, and completely organic to who he is. He's, mm -hmm. you know, he just turned 18 this week. He is, I think, both, both a shaper of this emerging youth culture mm -hmm. and a product of it. Now, you said that he's, by virtue, he's religious. He just recently, in an interview with, um, I think, some German magazine, said, I'm not religious. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm spiritual. I'm, I'm, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm mm -hmm. a Christian, but I don't consider myself religious. And mm -hmm. that, you know, some people were horrified. I said, like, well, yeah, he's, he's 18 years old. <laughs> Welcome to the new millennials. <laughs> right. I mean, just, that's how they express themselves. Yes. I wasn't surprised in that in the least. They can be far more articulate about what they actually believe, but they eschew labels. Yeah. You're not going to get him to put a label on himself apart from Christian or a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And a humble one at that, mm -hmm. which is admirable for anyone of any age. But, you know, he, he, he has this narrative and, yes, the social media, but it's what, he, what he's saying and how he's expressing himself. And he's consistent. And it is him who's doing it. And, 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 he, and he really has a social. World. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but he really no, has a great. socially engaged kind of spirituality too, right? Like, right. like if you look at his Twitter feed, which I started paying, I started following him uh, a couple weeks ago, um, mm. and and in fact, that's how I found out that uh, Whitney Houston had died was from Justin oh, Bieber wow. on Twitter. Uh, funny really? Enough. Yeah. Wow. I, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, but if if you look at what he's asking his fans to do, he. Yep. I mean, he's talking to teenagers and in infusing in his pop culture, you know, kind of culture making uh, emphasis, a sense of responsibility and care right. for others and for the planet. Like, it's really quite admirable. And it doesn't I, I, some some regular listeners to this show will, will be bothered by the fact that I have, you know, again, bring up something about how. As compared to Bono, right, which drives me crazy, and I know you've written books about Bono, so you can have a better perspective <laughs> on that than I can. But it doesn't feel that preachy for some reason, right? It doesn't feel opportunistic. It doesn't feel like he's trying to make up for something. It just seems like he's just saying, look, I think we as young people should care about the rest of the world, and we should do something to make it better. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I know I know Bono, I don't know Justin, and so I would say that in as much as I understand either of them, both of the ways that they express this is an organic, authentic outgrowth is of right? who they are in their personalities. But well, that's good. I'll Justin, take that one. No, seriously. It, but it, just, it, Bono's been pushy about whatever it was he's been interested in since he was 13 years old. That's just <laughs> how he's wired. You know, that's just how he is. But, okay, fair enough. With, but Justin, you know, he... Um, he he tells the kids first of all he's very aware of the extraordinary life he has and how he got it mm. and he is very aware of the blessings that he has and where they come from and he believes that they're from God a God that loves him mm -hmm. and everyone else and wants everybody to know that and so he's always talking about being grateful giving back being grateful to his parents to the world to the fans 
um, paying it forward is an expression he uses all the time for for making a difference. You know, you've had a grace in your life. You've had a blessing. Give it back to somebody else. You might not have very much, but you have more than somebody else does. You can do this. You can change the world. They tell kids, they tell us that we don't matter, that we don't have a voice, but we do. Mm. So let's do this. And so he's that's constant, and it's been there since the very beginning. You know, that gratitude, responsibility, and encouragement. And he's not shy about talking about his faith. He's always the first one to ask people to pray for something. Mm -hmm. And it's not just he's throwing it out there. He'll come back to it. When he had a friend who was um, uh, Sean Kingston, who's a Jamaican uh, hip-hop artist, was hurt in an accident in in Miami, he said, please pray for him. But he kept coming back to it. Mm -hmm. And then when he was discharged early, he wrote this beautiful tweet about, you know, thank being thankful to God for God's mercy and grace that he's out of the hospital and he's better. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a consistency. Mm -hmm. It's a positive message, but it has soul to it. It's not just, you know, you can make a difference. There's something behind it and it just seems to bubble up out of him. Um, And it's, he doesn't do it in a way that would be easy to sell to a Christian market because Mm -hmm. he doesn't speak in, in evangelical ease. Um, But, it's very it, to me. It's it's really heartening, and that the kids get it. They might not have known what his religious history is or what the label mm-hmm. that might best apply to him would be, but they know he's got this part of him that's going on that fuels a lot of a lot of what he does, and if not most of what he does in the world. I mean, it's 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 quite intriguing to. I mean, the, the picture that you've painted is someone for whom authenticity and humility, gratefulness, mm-hmm. a social conscience, a social conscious attitude that you should and can do something to benefit the world Mm -hmm. um, is not what a lot of people think you're going to get out of sort of a a uh, you know puppy love pop music icon and and maybe that and i think you're trying to say maybe that's what makes so many millions of people find uh, a connection with this guy is not yeah. just uh, his cuteness and his dip- because you know I mean I guess he is just yeah I mean he's, oh he's cute as a button Come yeah on. I mean he's 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 certainly cute um, yeah but that there's something more there that might represent um, some tag points for us to understand what's going on in a in a in a religious world but also in a in a broader cultural world absolutely and and also you know whether your kid is into Justin Bieber or something else. Uh-huh. One of the aims of this book for me, as a as a parent of a of a child who's now coming into adolescence, and as somebody who really does actually think she's not that far away from her own, yeah. even though that might not factually be true, is there are things that our children, that young people who people that are in our lives who are young, are care about and are passionate about that we just mm-hmm. don't get, mm-hmm. and we tend to dis- to dismiss them because of their youth or because we don't like the way it sounds or looks or whatever it is. We don't get it. And I think we should, we have an obligation, whether we're parents or not, to pay closer attention to the things that our young people are passionate about. Mm. Because they might not always be something that speaks to the heart or the soul of the child. They might not always be something that's going to be around for more than a week. But sometimes they are. And sometimes they can really plant a seed in the heart of a young person that blossoms and produces fruit in a way we have no idea that can change them and also change the world Hmm. so i hope that you know i'm trying to practice this myself um whatever it is that that the kid you care about is passionate about just try to be more conscious about at least paying attention because if you give them a lot of time to express themselves they'll get there you just have to get past the giggles and the oh my god he's so cute i'm gonna marry him someday (laughs) that's the heart of the matter right you know well, so. K- Kathleen, I think that's fantastic. Thanks for writing the book. Thanks for being on. Let, let me ask you, what, what, are you, you. Uh, what, what, what are you working on now? Did you have a friend who put a little bug in your ear about a new book? Do you you have... know, I'm waiting. To, I've been traveling, and David's been traveling. I'm like, how about we have sushi? Yeah. yeah um, right. you know, what, am I, what should I do next? I do have a few, uh, a few projects uh, in the works that you know, I haven't settled on one just yet, but mm-hmm. I hope to be able to tell people what I'm doing sometime soon here. And, and do you feel like, um, do, do you feel like it's going to be something in the in the pop culture area yeah. again because you are the, um, the the guide for a lot of us in uh, in what's happening in the in the, the kind of because I'm the of, god girl yeah because yeah. you're the um, god girl that connects pop culture <laughs> to other things <laughs> yeah I think it probably will be another cultural book and, if, and it wasn't going to be but I think it is yeah. um, now because that's what's what I'm passionate about at this moment and this was a fascinating exercise for me 
both as a journalist and as a as a believer with a B. Yes. Um, and and a B now. Um, do you, do, do you, oh, so yeah, you you yourself would count yourself as a believer. Oh do you, yeah. Um, did, have, did you did you get any re- reaction from Justin Bieber about this book? Did I know uh, that does they, he know uh, that it exists? Oh, you know, he certainly knows about the book. They all do. Um, I didn't. I haven't heard anything from Justin personally, mm-hmm. but I have heard from people who are quite close to him and know him very well. Mm-hmm. And I was pl- and especially one who would not is not known for um, BSing about anything. And they, I've been told that I got it right. I nailed it. I oh. got him. You know, and that was really, I was really pleased to hear that. Um, I hoped I had. I thought I had. I'd done all my heavy lifting, but you know, you never know. Yeah. But I think I did. I think I did get my finger on the pulse, and that really has nothing to do with me. There was a lot of prayer that went into this. And I think God really helped me to get out of my own way and uh, just sort of follow the spirit. Yeah, well, where it needed to go. So. That's fantastic. That's Kathleen Falsani. You can find her at KathleenFalsani.com. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you can look at The Dude Abides, the Coen Brothers, uh, The Gospel According to the Coen Brothers. Uh, do I have that right? Is that what you call that book, The Gospel yep. According to the Coen Brothers? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Ka- Kathleen Falsani, spelled with a C. You can find her and, and track all that there. And the book, again, on Justin Bieber is called Biebler, and it's a... Uh, Belieber. 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 See, I just, can't, I just can't. I just can't. <laughs> I got the Keebler. You know, this whole time I keep saying to myself, I got the Keebler. <laughs> the, the Keebler, the Keebler uh, elf. elves in my head because he's just this cute little elf, and uh, yeah, it's it's unbelievable that I can't. Pre- I mean, I'm looking right at it. I'm looking right at the title of the book, looking right at the cover, and I still can't say it. It's really okay. I don't. I absolve you. F- Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank You're you. welcome. As and, well, we have yeah, of you. Yes, yes I, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> pay it forward. Yeah, well, that's good. That's Kathleen Falsani. The book is called Belieber. You should uh, pick up a copy of it and follow Kathleen over at KathleenFalsani.com. And stick around with us here for the Right on Doug Pedro Radio on AM 950. The progressive voice of Minnesota and DougPedgeRadio.com. Thanks, Kathleen. Talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.